Assalamu alaikum, this is Samia from Sunnah Living and today we're going to talk about a specific kind of planning, spiritual planning. In the last video, um, I talked about the overall idea of planning, how to set up goals, how to uh, make things happen into your life, whatever things you want to accomplish, how to make it come true as part of your planning routine. Is that, you know, they're going to want to see you. They don't want to see a little part. I'll move a little bit to the side so you can see the cat. Okay, so this is what we talked about in the last video and today I want to zoom in a little bit in the idea of spiritual planning. Yes, there is some planning that comes in part when, it, when you're trying to enhance your spirituality. So I think oftentimes what happens is that we dictate the spiritual growth to specific kinds of individuals in our society. Uh, one person could be a grandmother or somebody who's like really old, you know, doesn't have a lot of things to worry about and now they can dedicate all of their hours every day to the Quran, to learning and to growing. Or we give it to somebody who's younger, who's spending like 20 hours in the masjid every day, either they're learning from the sheikh or they're reading the Quran or they're memorizing it. And we just kind of put them into those two categories. And I think we fail to realize the true potential that we have into our everyday life. If we're looking at the Quran and we're reading it and understanding it, I think it becomes pretty clear that the understanding and the applications that are inside the Quran is not meant for a certain kind of people, it's meant for you and for me. And it doesn't have to require 100% dedication every single day, but it can take a little bit from our everyday life. And I think another thing that we misunderstand is that we look at spirituality as something that's going to happen overnight. So a person just wakes up one day, has this epiphany, and you know, has this little really deep understanding maybe through a dream or something and they turn their lives around and now they're spending their every single day in the service of Allah and they're just busy doing everything they possibly can to you know forget about this world and focus on the hereafter and I don't know of a single case well I don't know a lot of people in general but I don't know of a single case of a person who is who has been through the exact same process I think every one of us who are trying to become better, we do a little bit at a time. And one day, while we do a little bit at a time, we develop ourselves enough and a spirituality enough that we can get to that point where we can say, oh, you know what? I don't know how this happened, but I find myself doing, you know, such such a task every single day, which I didn't used to do, you know, years ago or some months ago. And so it, it takes a little bit, little bit every single day for your iman to become stronger, for your heart to become stronger, so that you are able to do a little bit more things in the service of our Creator. So today I want to talk a little bit about how we can make those little goals into a reality. Some things, and I have heard this from different scholars over and over, people that I listen to and that I respect, over and over they say that you have to read a little bit of Quran every single day. Whatever is that little bit for you, I'm not going to dictate that, I'm not in a position to do so. But I think me and you, I think we can incorporate a little bit um, every single day whether and make it into a habit. We can wake up and just do it at the same time or we can just do it in the evening time or something the idea of and i think many times we shy away from doing that because we have this idea that oh yes we're going to read the quran but we have to understand it we're, we're going to sit down and we have to read the translation well yes it may be true but if you're just you know trying to find a little bit of glimmer of iman in your every single day then you can just read the quran just for the sake of recitation you know beautify the recitation for allah only no one has to hear you it can only be you and allah it doesn't have to be perfect your tajweed does not have to be like oh the the most perfect tajweed anyone has ever read but it just has to be your effort so understand that it's going not it's not going to be perfect it's going to have a lot of flaws but it's only you and Allah and that's it. There's no one in the middle, no one's listening. If you have time to sit down and actually incorporate translations into it and all these kind of things, that's even better. But, but you cannot discount the value, the overwhelming value of just reciting the Quran to continuing the tradition of recitation is extremely important. So if you are part of that tradition, that is beautiful. And if this is the only thing you can do, that's just great. So take your time every single day and just read whatever 5 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is for you. Set that timer 
and don't look back just sit down and just read and if you are a woman going through that time of the month where we are not you know reading the quran as we normally do and, and i know there's different opinions about that so whatever it is the opinion that you follow but in general we're not going to read it as much as we normally do i think another thing that we can add on is just either focusing on translation maybe maybe this is the time where you actively focus on translation you can go back to the different um, surahs in the quran that you're reading and just you know just read a translation from it it could be one thing that you do or in that time you can really focus on the lectures if you have that much time on your hands you can say okay i'm gonna watch you know this this minutes of this minutes of this series there are plenty of series online from the scholars on youtube or, or other you know areas wherever you listen to so there are resources available like that so this whole idea is try to connect with the quran in whatever way that you can't every single day the second thing we can do is a little bit step closer is to incorporate this idea of studying the theme i know most of us are not able to do so but i think for for the most of you who are watching these youtube videos i think it is safe to say that you have access to the internet and you have access to the things available online and so there's actually a lot of classes and courses and seminars that now you can just take online you don't have to leave your house and if you're living in a community like mine we're living kind of secluded we don't have a lot of access and if i do want to learn something physically i have to really plan for that you know travel five hours or ten hours to attend a seminar or a class if you're in a position like this then online is like a godsend most of the online courses are actually recorded as well. So you can actually, you know, you don't have to be present at that time. You can do that when your child goes to sleep or, you know, you have a few hours uh, for or an hour or two at home where you can really dedicate uh, per week. The classes I'm personally taking advantage of right now is Column Connect. I'm going to link them down below. Um, it's actually an hour class once a week. You can take as many or as little as you can. I'm personally taking only one and I take it once a, an hour uh, every Wednesday and it's the class foundation of a student. So a person who's trying to become a student of Islam, trying to learn, just learning the etiquettes and the adab of being a student. And so far we've only taken two classes, but it's beautiful. It's actually I mean, you understand getting a little bit deeper, just, just, you know, just taking a little bit off of the skin of this whole wealth of knowledge, I think is addicting. It's very beautiful and it makes you see the world in a completely different perspective. And if you're learning from, uh, you know, credible sources and credible scholars, um, then that is the way to do it. And if you have access to that online, then go for that. Uh, another thing you can do is if you are privileged enough to live in a community where you have lectures and speakers happening or coming in, uh, I think that sometimes we get, we start to feel guilty because maybe you're living in a community where a lot happens and you begin to feel guilty because you can't do all of it okay, don't do that okay whatever is going to happen is the risk from allah he's the one who has decided where you're going to be and where you're not going to be so don't let that happen to yourself if you have these classes coming to you um you know I know there's some, I mean, Dallas community has like a thousand things happening every day, subhanAllah. This is beautiful. If you can do that, great. But if you can't, which is most of us, I can, I can definitely agree with that. Most of us can't do a lot of things. So don't feel bad about that. Just pick one thing you can do maybe every three months. So, you know, or every five months or something. You're like, you know what? I can't take this class. I can't take, dedicate myself to continuation of these courses, whatever. But I can't do them two times a year or something like that. So pick them and just do them, okay? This the idea of making the intention is rewarding enough. And then you are waiting for that time. It's also rewarding enough, right? So just think about how every, you know, even your thoughts, uh, your desire to do something is bringing you closer to Allah and enhancing your spirit, spirituality in itself. So don't give up on that idea and, you know, just plan ahead and say, okay, I'm going to take one or two courses a year. If that's all you're going to do, then that's, then that's perfectly all right. The last thing I want to mention is probably going to encase a lot of things or encompass a lot of things. Uh, and that is to surround yourself with things and people that remind you to become better so it could be you know things that you put on the wall some sayings i mean there's actually beautiful things i mean it depends on your style but on etsy and things like that there's a lot of things that you can just you know download and print out and put them in a nice frame and put them on the wall or you know on your desk or in your planner that you're using just as a form of reminder if that's what you need so there's a lot of beautiful things. I know you don't have to buy the, I mean, personally, if you like them, that's fine. But I never used to like 
you know, the plastic printouts that you will find in, in traditional, you know, Islamic stores or something. I never enjoy them. I never, you know, truly like them. I like the more modern kind of things, uh, more colorful uh, kind of things that, you know, trendy kind of stuff, I guess. And so this is what I personally prefer. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do now. So like I said, Etsy has a lot of um, artists and shops who are creating very beautiful work, calligraphy and things like that to help you remind yourself. So there's a lot of people who are creating very beautiful things uh, when it comes to planners or just books and things like that, which is uh, allowing you to think and reflect while you are surrounding yourself or opening pages with reminders and quotations and things. And so that can be very helpful. So surrounding yourself when it comes to things is very useful. Maybe you get excited or really motivated when you see a picture of the Kaaba on the wall. I don't know, but figure out what it is that feel works for you and that you believe in and you know let that be your reminder every single day or you can uh, find companionship so definitely if you are able to in your community find a person uh, a muslim sister or thing or who is somebody who is really you know working towards that or actually you know values that or you know really does value islam into their life not overtly but really practicing deep inside you know what i'm saying so you know you know that the people that i'm talking about someone who really lift you up they don't bring you down they don't make you feel bad so those kind of people um try to find someone who is a muslim and who does that for you because I, they're they're beautiful i mean i am personally have friends from different faith backgrounds uh, but i think just having a connection to your own faith and having somebody in person who you can talk about issues with who can just you know just as a regular repetition of uh, of islam just regular conversations can be very beneficial to so try to find somebody who's actually trying to become better who is actually valuing Islam into their lives and if not able to do that I don't have that luxury there are not a lot of people like this in my community I have found a great community of that online so I am really big on Instagram I do use Instagram a lot more than I used to before Facebook has become too political for me so I stay out of it as much as I can but Instagram I can choose my tribe I can choose my people I can allow whatever I want to show in my feed and I can just remove whatever does not work with me okay and that's not to diss people that's not to say some people are not better than other but i know what i need in my life right now and so i can choose whatever it is and so i do i have a lot of friends on there that i talk to actually you know we message each other or just we, we're commenting on each other and that we're encouraging each other they're doing something that i'm like man i wish i could do that and i get inspired by them and we kind of you know help each other it's it sounds a little bit geeky but it's really not that way i'm not a person who is 100% dedicated. That's why I'm making this video. I'm making this video for yourself and for me so that, you know, we can find things in our everyday life to connect ourselves, you know, minute by minute to Allah, uh, hour by hour or something that we do, connect ourselves and, and try to really get a spirituality up and going. And so, like I said, this last bit was all encompassing. It can be the surroundings around you. It can be the people around you. And it can also be, you know, the platforms, online platforms that me and you are attached to every single day. And just to end this video, I want to encourage you to just take one step at a time and don't take 10 steps every day. You know what I'm saying? Just take one step and do it consistently that creates some momentum and that that one small step is actually what is loved by Allah anyway so take one small step every day consistently try to be as consistent as you can and so find little things that you do don't um burden yourself with this idea of perfection there is no such thing you're not gonna wake up and you're not gonna want to do five things you may want to do five things the first day but you're going to slack on them the sixth day. So just pick one thing. And I talked about several things today. Just pick one of those things and do them into your life and see how that changes your perception and your view. And but what's most important is if you're learning online, learn from someone who is credible, uh, who is not your aunt or uncle necessarily, but who's knowledgeable, who's credible, who you respect and you admire, okay? And so take a little bit of steps every day and inshallah, me and you, we can find ourselves doing a lot more in five years than we ever thought we could possibly do. So I hope this encouraged you and that um, it helped you into finding a little bit of what you can do to become closer to Allah every day. And I will see you next time. Assalamu alaikum.